All right, um, um, shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom. So we had um, Khan Taza Doc, um, Al Eliezer. Everybody just introduced the Hebrew name. What's your Hebrew name? Right. <laughs> shalom, shalom, Yasharala. Um, we here to do another lesson. Um, this is Brother Taza Yawan. Shabbat shalom to you. This is Brother Marino, Shabbat Shalom. And Taza Duck. So I'm basically, um, because of the um, the confusion that's actually um, been going on, you know, consistently throughout the earth, and a lot of our um, people are actually being misguided by a lot of Israelites out there that's actually teaching that, you know, um, all nations can actually be saved. Now, Hypothetically speaking, that may be true, but all nations will not be saved until those nations pay for what they've actually done for the nation of Israel. So those nations must first go into captivity, and then they're going to serve under us, the Israelites. And we're going to prove that um, without a doubt. So to those of you in the listening audience, at this time we're going to give you a chance to get your pens and papers so that you could actually take notes, um, learn this, watch this video several times so you could actually get the true message. Now, one of the things that I've actually um, witnessed, you know, from all of these Christian churches is they all teach the false philosophy that Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, the one that they refer to as God, loves everybody. That's what all Christian churches teach. God loves everybody. And no matter who, are, who you are, no matter what nation you're from, as long as you accept the one that they refer to as Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can be saved. You can be saved. Now we're going to prove today that that's not in the Bible. It's actually a misunderstanding of Scripture. So we're going to bring it out that... That is not true. So I think the Ark right here already have a scripture on that. So I mean, he's going to bring out that scripture. It says in Amos chapter 3 verse 2. This is the most high speaking. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the nation of Israel. Read on. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Now, let, 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 let's prove that because... Some people, you know, we was dealing with um, a guy that considered himself a deacon, um, and he told us that we was actually taking scriptures out of context. One of the first things that I would like to point out, the Bible has to be read in a specific way. And it tells us how to read the Bible in Isaiah 28, verse 10. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You cannot read the Bible in a chronological order and expect to get the proper understanding. So with that, now, go back to what you had, brother. Uh, you had uh, Amos. I just want you to read the scripture before that so that the people could see that he was talking to the nation of Israel. Who was he talking to when he said, only you have I known? Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel. So who was he talking to? O children of Israel. Against o, o who? Children of Israel. Go ahead. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Okay, I, uh, oh, oh, read on. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he had taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? So basically the Most High is saying that he has to actually separate from Israel because we are strayed from the Lord's statutes and commandments. See, there's some niggerism. And this is, this is why we're out here doing this. 
This is why, see, that's the spirit of Satan right there trying to intervene with this message. That's the spirit of Satan right there, you know. He hate this work, man. Whenever, whenever this word trying to come out, Satan always trying to make himself present. <laughs> Right, 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 right. That's how funny, man. Satan, he don't want this truth to come out. Right, right. Notice how when we was doing the interview and we had the scriptures out, man was making noises in the back. Right, right, right. Scriptures come out, then demons come out. So as the scriptures come out. Demons come out. So I mean, we gonna start off with does the Most High, the one that you call God, loves everybody. And the first scripture. That I want is Isaiah 40, verse 15. That's what I had. <laughs> All right. Uh, good, good. Let me find it. Hold on. I'm sorry. Isaiah, pages of the home. You said 40? Yeah. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 15. Because most churches teach that no matter how you, who you are, God loves everybody. All right. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15 this is the most high speaking behold the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance behold he taketh up the isles as a very little thing uh, that's it yeah that's it on that so verse 17, oh wait, verse 17. Uh, uh, according to that the nations are nothing they're less than nothing Verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So all nations besides the nation of Israel is counted as nothing. It's counted as nothing. You know, someone pulls Psalms 147, 19, and 20. Um, uh, all right. Psalms 147, 19, and 20. This is Psalms 147, 19, verse 20, 19 and verse 20. And it says, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Write that down for him, man. Because it says he has not dealt with any other nation. So when it tells you, it tells you. That he hasn't dealt with any other nation besides Israel. That's right. That's it. And as for his judgments, read that part. As for his judgments, no other nation. That means no other people. Chinese, Japanese, you know, Edom. Anyone you want to name besides the nation of Israel knew, knows his judgments, knows his, his law, know his covenant. That's what that is saying. Let me hold up for one second. I got another. Yes, I got one more. Two more. So, so what that is basically saying is that... No other nation of people have any business with this Bible in their hand unless someone from the nation of Israel is teaching it. So, you know, truth be told, if you're of another nation that's not of the nation of Israel, you're not to have this Bible in your hand trying to teach it because you're not teaching it correctly. What do you have? I got Psalms 47 and 8. Yahweh reigneth over the heathen. Yahweh sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. And here's a precept. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54, all the way down right, to 57. Right, right. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him, we all, we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people, here it is, as for the other people which also come of Adam, now this is talking about all of the other people that's not of the nation of Israel. Yep. He's specifying that. As for the other people. Thou hast said that they are nothing. What? They are nothing. They are what? Nothing. Hold on. You mean to tell me a God that created all people are saying that all of the other people besides the nation of Israel are nothing? nothing. Brother, are you sure you're reading that correctly? Kind of nothing. <laughs> but be like unto spittle. Unlike to what? Spittle. That means spit. <laughs> And has likened the abundance of them that drop of a drop that falleth from a vessel, 
And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. I mean, truthfully speaking, we could close the book right now. Because there's no, there's no scripture that'll get Donald Trump out of that. There's no scripture that'll get Hillary Clinton out of that one. There's no scripture that'll get Sean Hannity, Michael Savage, Russ Lumbar, or any of them out of that one. What you got, Eliezer? Melanie Trump. Put it in front of you. Yeah, um, I want to touch on the fact that most high is not the altar of confusion. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it says, For God is not the altar of confusion. It's a butt of peace in all the churches of the saints. Now, this confusion is straight from Satan himself. Bring it out. Now, when we read the warnings that Hamashiach gave us, Look what he said in Matthew 24 and verse 4. And Yahweh shall answer and say unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Okay. So the first thing he warned you about is, you know that truth I taught you? Hold on. Because there's going to be somebody trying to remove that from you. It said, Yahweh shall answer and say unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, not a few, many. many, saying, I am Christ. I represent Christ and shall deceive many. What's that? Who comes in Christ's name more than anyone? The Christian church. Christianity. Christianity. Claim. They claim that, you know, they are following after Christ. And if you're not under the Christian banner, right, you cannot make it into salvation. Right. This is what they teach. Right. But we can't find that teaching nowhere in the Bible. I can find where he said, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ and deceive many. So what we have is the Christian churches who are taking the scriptures and what the brother tried to claim that we was doing taking it out of content that's exactly what they do all day long because they understand that most of our people don't read Come. let alone read the bible Come. they tell them things and then the few that do read the bible they will instruct them don't read the old testament you're right so what you're dealing with is a false prophet what we're dealing with is false prophets that has polluted our people with false doctrine. This is why Jeremiah warned our people, do not listen to these prophets. Because the more our people listen to these prophets, go ahead, brother. No, the it was worse it get. It was something to piggyback uh, what the brothers was talking no, land about. Back. Land back. Sh Shalaka, oh, that. Land, land back. back. So, land back. Salaka, we don't speak that. <laughs> land back, sorry. Land about back. about the most high only <laughs> dealing with a certain nation. Uh, Salakia. Yeah. Uh, uh, el the elders right, the brothers right. Uh, uh, Salakia. Yeah. But in Esther and the Apocrypha, in, ver in chapter four, it says it says, declare unto us that in all nations a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations. That's the 13 and 4? Yes. And continually despise the commandments of kings so, so as the unity of our kingdom honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So what that's saying? That said it was a certain people that this law was given to that was scattered amongst nations. Why? Because we didn't live that law that the Most High gave us. Now, now the problem, now, now one of the main problems with the Christian church is pride. The Christian church, when you approach them with the Bible and you give them the truth, they will give you a birth date of their church. They will tell you how long their church had been around. They will tell you how much wealth they have acquired, which has nothing to do with whether you're telling the truth yes. or telling a lie. But they will throw all these things to create an illusion that because I've been lying this long, that means it's true now. Yes. This is what they will do. They will read your scripture and give you a birth date of their church yeah. that has nothing to do with the scripture. Uh -huh. Now, they refuse to humble themselves and repent because a lot of our people are in these churches. But the problem is, 
it's too much pride and not enough humility. Because when somebody show you the word of truth, that's the most highest love try, trying to turn you around. You're going the wrong direction. Instead of accepting that love and saying, man, I've been doing this wrong for so long, you buck up and you rebel. Now, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So we got to learn. But the problem is these churches want to give you their birth date and tell you, well, I've been around for so long, there's nothing you can teach me. But all you have is the wisdom of this world. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 20, it said, where is the wise? I'm going to go up to verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Now, all these prestige pastors, you know, driving around their Bentleys, asking for their jets and so forth and so on, looking real shiny, right? These are the ones that our people consider the wise. They ain't looking at us and saying, them brothers wise. No, they looking at Pastor Porkchop and saying, that brother wise. They saying, that brother deep. He told me about the third and fifth heaven and how he dwelled in it. Mm -hmm. And this is where grace was created in the third and fifth heaven. And we can't read nothing that they saying in this Bible. But everybody will say, these are the wise men. So the scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. These brothers don't know nothing. It said, where is the wise? Where is the strives? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made the foolishness, have not made foolish the wisdom of this world? God. So you got a script, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right you got a highlight. Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah, so so basically um it goes back again. Like <clears throat> does the most high love everyone? Now if a parent said to one child, I favor you over the um other child, that would actually be considered to be favoritism. If one race said to another race, I prefer my race over yours, that's considered to be racism. But the Most High chose Israel out of all of the nations that he created to be a special people above all people upon the face of the earth. This is written in the Bible and these are the type of scriptures that your pastors and your preachers will not bring out. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Read what you got out. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. Every you talking about everybody? No, nope. everyone. Mm -hmm. He's talking everybody. About He's talking to Israel. <laughs> to be a special people unto thee, mm -hmm. unto Himself, mm -hmm. above all people, yeah. all people that are upon the face of the earth. Mm. Verse seven. The Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. Mm. Right. For ye were the fewest of all people. Mm. Now go, go to Deuteronomy 14. 14 and 2. Okay. After I bring out 20, 26. 14 and 2. 26 and 18, I had that highlighted already too. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Want me to read verse 1 also? Alright. For thou art an holy people unto thee the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations upon the earth. If he chose everybody, then he wouldn't say oh, okay. upon all people. You, right, you, right. Know, you know what they'll tell you, brother? They'll tell you things huh. like, you know what they'll tell you? He go, he go to uh, uh, the Christian lies. He come to witchcraft, right? Because it most certainly got our people be witch. No matter how many scriptures we hit them with, they don't even want to hear it no more. A lot of them. Now, they'll tell you things like, it was okay for God to be racist back then because his, his, his son would come and correct his mistakes. This is why he came. He came, he, he came to correct what his father did. This is what they'll explain to you. They'll say it was okay to, for him to have a favorite race, right? 
They will say it was okay for him to have a favorite race of people because eventually, right, eventually that mistake will be corrected by his son. This is what they'll say. And they don't even realize it's what the brother just said. That's straight blasphemy. They don't even, they don't even think about what they're saying when they say that stuff. Now, I'm going to read from Malachi. This is the book of Malachi. Let me see, where can I find it? Alright, this is Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Most High said, he don't change. So if he was so-called racist back then, and he had favoritism back then, he don't have it now. then he still got it now. Forever. He just said, I don't change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody lying. Uh, yes, this, uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 18 and verse 19. And it says, And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be a particular people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made, and praise, and the name, and the honor, and that thou mightest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. So that's telling you right there again, many scriptures. He's telling you he's only dealing with one nation, one particular nation, one nation that he chose. I, 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 there's nothing else we can do. That's we, right. yeah, you can tell he's dealing with us. Look what happened to us. It ain't happening to nobody else. Even, right, right, right. Even in your so-called your New Testament, that that you know, that's what the Christians run to. You know, James one and one tells it all. Right, right, right. So, uh, not right now, um, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, um, whenever you engage with them, they they they're always interested in saving Esau. Yes. They always it, the conversation, no matter what it is, they don't ask you can an African can be saved. They don't ask you, can a Japanese can be saved? They will ask you, well, what you believe, can the white man be saved? Let's see what the Bible says. Let's get the book of Malachi, the first chapter, verse 1 through 2. Let's see what the Lord say, who can be saved. Book of Malachi, first chapter, verse 1 and 2. Because, first chapter, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. So he's speaking to the nation of Israel. And he said, I have loved you. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? And he said, well, how have you loved us, God? You put us through all of this turmoil and hardship. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Most High? Yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau. He done what to Esau? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. I'm keep going. So, you know, the Most High says right here in the scriptures that he hated Esau. Now, why did the Most High hate Esau? Was it something that he did, Eleazar? Why did he hate Esau? Because Esau had perpetual hatred towards us. Book of Romans. Book of Romans, the ninth chapter, kills it. Obadiah. Romans the ninth chapter It says the children being not yet born That's the scripture I'm looking for Bring it out Romans the ninth chapter The children being not born Having done no good or evil So they was That was basically created so that, so that the Most High could show That he had an elected people He had an election So the purpose of the election could actually be proven it, it, before he even done any good or evil. So it wasn't because of something that Esau had done. You, you got it up? No. He's an Obadiah. Yeah, I'm at Obadiah. Keith got it. Romans 9, 10. Romans 9 to 13. Start, start reading where it says, The children not being yet born haven't done any good or evil. Romans 9 first. Romans 9 and verse 13 and 14. Okay. This is Romans 9. Verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, 
but Esau have I hated. Verse 14, it says, What shall we say then? Go ahead and finish that one Is there any is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Well, it's, it's 11, my bad. It's, it's 11, oh, Salaki. It's 11. R Romans, 9, um, Romans 9 and 11. Yeah. For the children being not yet born, Khan. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So it wasn't something that Esau had done Khan. that the Most High hated him for. It was just for the purpose of him showing the world that he chose Israel. It says that the purpose of God according to the election might stand not of works so not of what they did but of him that calleth so the ones that he called from the beginning and that's it that's it I like what you say. that's it that's a good one Elder. also um, I want to read something also um, the brother was talking about how our people is so um, involved in trying to save Esau, even though the Most High is so involved in destroying Esau. All right. Um, then they claim they're doing God's will. Right. No, you're not. Um, if you actually look up something called Stockholm Syndrome, mm -hmm. this is what it says feelings of trust or affections felt in certain cases of kidnapping mm. or hostage mm. taking by victims towards their captors. So another one said, it says, it says a capture bonding and psychological phenomena described in 1973 in which hostages express empty right and sympathy and have positive feelings towards their capturers sometimes to the point of defending and identifying with their captors so right here this is a, a mental illness that says the people who are captured they express empathy sympathy and positive feelings towards their captors. Sometimes to the point of defending and identifying with the captors. So you know what that's talking about? That's talking about how you're so proud to call yourself an American, mm -hmm. yet you're not treated like an American. Mm -hmm. yeah, I heard him talking about the Unk Ellinger, man. See if he wants to come and sit down with him. That one bucket. There you go. Go ahead, take over. He went in the store with Howie. Mm -hmm. I was talking about how the crucifix came from the country. Really? It came from this? Yeah. So that's, 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 that's what he says. So let's bring that brother out. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's that's I, heard I got something. But that was another one with him. And when I invited him to sit down before, they took off. They took off. Yeah. I got something for what we were just talking about, about Esau. Bring it up. It's in Book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Thou dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou exalts thyself as the eagle, and thou hast set thy nest among the stars. Thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. Esau, he's, he got himself upon everything. He, he, got, he built in all of these big, powerful houses and bases. And he said he sets his nest amongst the stars. stars. Yeah. He's talking about his satellites. His satellites. Yeah, his satellites. Looking down at everyone's bedroom. Mm -hmm. The most high going to bring all that down. Trying to infiltrate the moon. Yeah. Trying to do all, trying to live pla different places. Everything. They're trying to take over. He exalted himself as the eagle. As the eagle. What, what was the symbol that Hitler liked to use? The eagle. eagle. The Egypt. They got that from Egypt. Egypt. What's the symbol that Greeks like to use? The eagle. eagle. What's the symbol that Romans use? The eagle. Even Hitler used the eagle. Uh, Man. Let's see. Here's one. Here's another one. Verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Mm. Forever. Mm. He's the only na Esau's nation is the only nation that's gonna be cut off forever. He's that wicked. Which so which one which one me to get? Uh yeah. Oh uh, Keith got it. He can get Keith can look it up. Read twenty to um 
to 29. 20 to 29? Yeah, keep going. Ed this is, the show. This is second Edris. Oh, man, he got the vibe of this show right here. Verse 20. I need to the second Edris. Verse 5. Verse 20 to 20. I mean, chapter 5. Verse 20 to 29, you say? And so I fasted seven days, mourning and weeping, like as Azazel the angel commanded me. And after seven days, so it was, that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding, and I began to talk with the Most High again. And said, O Lord, thy bearest rule of every wood of the earth, and of all the trees thereof. Thou hast chosen the one only vine. Only one. You hear that? So yeah. what you're hearing is the nature of the Most High. One. He's saying out of all these trees of the earth. What did it say? Read that again. It says, now this is verse 23. And it says, and said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee only one vine. Mm. One vine only. And of all lands of the whole world that has chosen thee, one pit. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. So it's one, one, not, not all. This is his nature. This is nature. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee, one river. And of all the building cities that has hollowed Zion until thyself. So Zion was what? Zion was for the kingdom of Israel. That was where our people dwell. And of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. 27, and it says, And among all the multitudes of people, thou hast given thee one people. I'm going to run that back. This is verse 27. This is in 2nd Edris, chapter 5. It says, And among all multitudes of people, that has given thee one people, and unto this people whom thou lovest, thou givest a law that is approved of all. Mm. Mm. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over unto many? And upon the one root hast thou prepared others? And why hast thou, why hast thou scattered the, thy only one people among many? So he's asking, why did you scatter us among many people, many nations? And, and they which that did gainsay, they, pro they promised and believed not thy covenants. So he's saying those other nations, they don't, they don't believe in these promises. They don't believe in the covenant. They don't believe in none of that. So that's why they can live unlawfully. They won't give in the law. The law was only given to a specific people. They don't have the spirit. We got to accept it. Exactly. So when you see other nations, you know, when you see them getting fame, riches, glory, when you see them getting those things of the world, that's bad. They, that's not they're not getting that from the Most High, because yeah. the Most High is telling you right there. Now, I want, now, I want I to show you something for that. concerning Edom. When you read in the Bible Dictionary, this is Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary on page. 142 this is what it says about Edom it said Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment it said notably Isaiah 34 and 5 and verse 6 and 61 and 1 I mean 63 and 1 it says she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who has not given any promise of mercy from God. Mm. That kills it right there. That's the Bible that dictionary. Kills it right there. The experts, That's... they know that. Con. So what was you getting in? I was getting in. Oh. Oh, it was this was referring to what he was talking about about Zion and um and us and Esau. One, right? Yeah. This is Obadiah verse 17. Chapter 1 verse 17. And I'm going to read verse 21. It says, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Mm -hmm. And the, and saviors mm -hmm. shall... 
Mm -hmm. Old Testament Hebrew say no, there ain't no, no saviors, right? There's no saviors. And, most and saviors say. shall come up, saviors, more than one, mm -hmm. shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. I thought the Most High wasn't dealing with no saviors. Yeah. King David's going to be the savior, right? <laughs> well, King David's coming, right? They talk Torah, 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 Torah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot of them, when I ask them Torah questions, they ain't even read the book yet. Uh -huh. The only thing they do know is they don't believe the New Testament. Uh -huh. We got to we gotta stop that stuff, man. You know, we, we, we got to stop that stuff. We got to stop being experts at attacking each other, but weak at what we do believe in. We'll be experts at what we don't believe in, but we don't know nothing about what we do believe in. And that's a daggone shame. It should be the opposite. It should be, I know I got what I know down pat, and I know a little bit what you got enough to get at you if I need to. That should be somewhat how it is. Now, um, I want to show that, I want to show that because it's about it's about developing ourselves and becoming better us is by the power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Um in Acts chapter five, verse thirty one, um matter of fact, I'm gonna start at thirty and I'm gonna go to thirty one. It says, And God and the, the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shah whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. So it's telling you that Christ died for the Israelites. Who, who, who slew and hung him on a tree? The Romans. The Romans. The Romans. Wrong. And the punch is in there. Time. Time. So, like I said, when, 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 when dealing with the Christian church, get man. Jeremiah 31 verse 1 to back that up. Because it says the God of our fathers. Our fathers. Let's see who, see who the God of our fathers is. Get Jeremiah 31 verse 1. Yeah. I think I'm going to read Acts 29 and 2 too. Chapter 31 verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel. So that's who he's talking to. And they shall be my people. That's, all, that's the uh, only family that he's talking to. And you know what Christians, you know what Christians say? They say Israel is, is, Israel is everybody. It's not everybody. It's not. It's the Look. seed of Jacob. So, so basically, the brother just brought out, you know, um, the God of our fathers. We're going to go over that again to make sure you get the clear understanding. So we're going to go back to Acts 5 verse 30, and we're going to read that again. And we're, you're going to get understanding. You just heard it, but you're going to hear it again with understanding. So Acts 5 verse 30, brother, bring that out. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, he's the God of the Romans. He's the God of the Greeks. He's the God of the Africans. He created all, but he does not proclaim himself as the father of all. Throughout the scriptures, it just says the God of Israel, the God of Israel. You can't see where he refers to himself as the God of any other nation besides the nation of Israel. So read what you got, Acts 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai. No, read, read it slow, I want them to get the understanding. So it says the God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. So now, again, we're going to hold that. We're going to go to Jeremiah 31 verse 1. Because we need to understand who the Our Fathers is talking to. The God of Our Fathers, let's see. The God of Our Fathers raised up Yahawashai, whom slew, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Now we know that the Romans slew Hamashiach Yahawashai and hung him on the tree. We know who that's talking about. So let's see who the God of Our Fathers are. Which God? This, this is Jeremiah 31, verse 1. And it says, at the same time, saith the Lord, will I be God of all families of Israel, and they shall be my people. So, the only people that the Most High is dealing with is the families of Israel. That's the only family 
that the Most High is dealing with is the family of Israel. Was that it on Acts 5 verse 3? Yeah. I had something else for you right, for them too, Elder. Bring it up. This is Acts, this is Acts 2 verse 29. Now, I'm, I'm going to break this down because some people might get it confused now. It says, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you the patriarch David. So now, who's the patriarch David? What family did he come from? He came from Judah. He Which came from Israel. Khan, that he is both dead and buried, and his sculpture is with us until this day. So meaning, it didn't leave. It didn't leave Israel. The power, the throne is still here. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing God has sworn with him an oath, Salaki, God has sworn with an oath to him that of out that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Uh -huh. So that's continuing the throne of Israel. Yeah, we're, we're not done with Acts yet. There's one more scripture that there's one more scripture in Acts that should have been brought out. The scripture right under that, Acts 5 and 31. It's, it's imperative to read Acts 5 verse 30 and 31. So bring that out. Al. This is for you Old Testament Hebrews. Acts 5 verse 31 Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior So we're going to find out It says to be a prince and a savior We're going to find out who Hamashiach and Hawashah was raised up to save There's only one nation of people that he was raised up to save Read For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins No, but unto the Greeks of, To Israel No, but unto the Romans to Israel. No, but unto the Dutch. To Israel. No, but unto the Africans. To Israel. To Israel. You can read that any way that you want to read it, and it's still going to come out and say Israel. Not the whole world, Brother Deacon, and the Seven Day Adventists. <laughs> Only to Israel. Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah. What you got, Keith? And, and and Israel, what you got? You got something See, for us? They want to they wanna try to tell us yes. that, you know. Everybody is the chosen, but I can't read that nobody nowhere in the scriptures. They want to explain to us that every single nation is the chosen people of God. Right. But I can read in Isaiah 41 and 8, but thou Israel are my servant, uh. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So it's it's plain and simple to anybody who know the scriptures, man. And far as who delivered him up, when you go to when you go to Mark chapter ten, verse thirty three and thirty four, saying, "Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the the chief priests, unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death." and deliver him to the Gentiles. So we see who was involved. You can't, did that say the whole nation of Israel? No, it did not say the whole nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. It says, and he shall be delivered, and the son of man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to who? Mm -hmm. The Gentiles. So those are your Romans. I got a, a scripture when you're done. Mm, okay. And I was going to say an, another one. You know, this this one, you know, the churches, they just skip this book. This is James 1 and 1. And we, we bring this out. We bring this out every time. You know, just, just to confirm, to let you guys know, you know, that this is real about, about what, what the Most High is saying. This is James chapter 1, verses 1. And it says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. So he's he's not greeting any other nation. He, he's greeting the twelve tribes that were scattered throughout all nations God. through captivity, previous captivities. So, so I guess James. Was Everybody was slaves. Too. Yeah. You know how James, James was a racist too. I guess. You know what everybody. So talking. so basically, you know, uh, one of the other things I want to bring out is those that refer to themselves as Jehovah Witness. Wickedness. That. We often refer to as Jehovah wickedness. Now, I've been asking myself for years, what exactly is it that you supposedly have witnessed? What have you witnessed? Let someone get Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, read verse 1. Then we're going to jump down to the third verse. No, I mean to the 10th verse. 
But we're going to start it off at verse 1, one, so we can see who the Most High was talking to. Isaiah 43, verse 1. Then we're going to jump on down to the 10th to the verse. We're going to find out who the real witnesses of the Most High is. What you got? You want to read it? Or you want to read it? Oh, yeah, he, he could get the first verse, you get the 10th. Okay. All right. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. Oh who? O Jacob. Now we know that Jacob's name was actually changed to Israel. So it's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. He's referring to him as O Jacob. Go ahead. And he that formed thee, O Israel. O who? O Israel. So the Most High is talking to Israel. Read on. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. So the Most High claimed Israel as his own. Thou art mine. Mm. When thou pass, no, no, we're, now we're gonna pass it to Keith, and he's gonna read verse ten, cause I'm trying to figure out exactly what these Jehovah Witness have witness. Yes, sir. This is verse ten, and it says, "You are my servant," saith the Lord. Okay. And my servants, whom I, who I am chosen. No, no, no. Um, I mean, is that Bible is that a King James? Yeah. Because I want it read like it is. It should say, "Ye are my witnesses." Ye. Yes, Salaki, you're right, it says it. <laughs> ye are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, right. that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So who's mm. the witnesses of the, the Most High? The Israel. tribe of Israel. It says ye are my witnesses. Ye. So, so, with that being said, why is Jehovah Wickedness called, walking around calling himself witness? When the Bible specifically says, it specifies in Isaiah 43 verse 10, ye, meaning Israel, because we established in the first verse who he was talking to, are my witnesses. All right, well, bring it up. Isaiah 45 verse 5, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though... Thou has not known me. That's it. That was All right, what you got, Eliezer? You got some more scripts? See, see, so far, I don't see anywhere in the scriptures where it says everyone could be saved. I mean, everywhere you read Israel. Someone get Isaiah 14, chapter, verse 1. Someone pull me Isaiah 14, verse 1. Because everywhere I read in the scripture, salvation is of the Jews. Someone get drawn 422. Everywhere you read in the scripture, who can be saved? Who's salvation for? It's for Israel. It's always talking about, it, it, it gives specific, it, it's specifying the nation of Israel. He's not dealing with any other nations. Because people like to get their emotions involved, and what you've been taught, that's where you can't receive this. Many of you can't receive this. What you got, huh? John 4 and 2? John 4 verse 22. Oh, verse 22, okay. Ye worship, ye know not what. So here's Amashiach saying, listen, woman, you don't know what you worship. <laughs> We know what we worship. Yeah, we know what we worship. You don't know what the hell are you worshiping. You're worshiping a damn demon. <laughs> You're worshiping the uh. We know what we worship, read. For salvation is of the Jews. Not into the Greeks, not into the Romans, not into the Polish, not into the Dutch, not into the Japanese. For salvation is of who? The Jews. The Jews, meaning Israel. Israel. You got that, Keith? Um, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Yes, sir. 14 and 1. This is Isaiah 14, verse 1, and it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, Israel. on Jacob, right. Israel, and will yet choose Israel. Will choose who? Israel. So he's not, let me hold that for a second. Yes, sir. So according to what the brother is reading, he's not dealing with all of these other nations like T.D. Jakes, like the portray. He's not dealing with all of these other nations like Clef Dollar, like the lie about. And what's that man, Osteen? What's his name? Joe Osteen. Show me that, Joe Osteen. Read on. That man is a devil, man. He got man. the most demonic smile. <laughs> He's man, a devil. Every time he smile, man, I feel like and set, a wicked, revenant's so goat. And set them in their own land. Now, let, me, let, me, let me get, let me, let me, because. Here's one. Now, now, I want to stop right there for a second, because there's a certain group of people around here calling themselves Jews and they say in 1948 when America helped what they refer to as Israel become a forged state that was actually set in their own land. If that was being set in their own land then why was it mandated to be a state? 
They weren't set in their own land. That was not Bible prophecy being fulfilled. The prophecy that was actually being fulfilled is Ezekiel, the, 30, the 35th chapter, which talks about how they will actually go in there and steal the nations, steal the land from those two nations, meaning Israel, after they divide it into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom being in Israel and the southern kingdom being Judah. Let's finish that out, Key. Yes, sir. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. Yeah, let me, let me hold that. Yes, sir. Every time you so-called Jews pick up this Bible, you're cleaving to the house of Jacob. Because as we read in Psalms 147, 19 and 20, these, this Bible was only given to Israel. And the only way you are to learn it is if an Israelite teach you. So every time that you pick this book up, you're cleaving to the house of Jacob. Read on. And it says, this, this is verse, this is uh, verse 2. And it says, the, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them and their land, and of, of the Lord, of servants and handmaids, for servants and handmaids, lock him. And they shall take them captives, who, whose captives they were. Stop right there. Stop right there for a second. Mm -hmm. Let's get some understanding on that. It says they shall take them captives whose captives they were. The so-called Jews ain't never been in captivity under no one. And they're trying to bring me that Hitler crap because Hitler was a Jew. Look up his real name. He was a Jew. You know? So don't try and bring that. So who was actually in captivity? We. We was actually in captivity. We was bought here, many of our people, in the holes of slave ships. And... Jews finance 70% of the slave trade. You might say, we, we, we wasn't, in yeah, you financed it. That's you were the bankers that financed it. Goldman and Sachs. Right. All, all those, all those all Wall Street, those things in Wall Street come from, it, it's labor off of us. They're living off of our stuff, yeah. yeah. Bring right. it up. Now, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna show you something. To put the nail in the coffin to these, these go, nations having claim to our heritage, which, which sounds insane when you even listen to it. Why would another nation have claim to your son's inheritance? That don't make sense. Now, in Exodus chapter 11, verse 7, it says, But against thy children Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. See, the Most High called the other nations what? dogs mm -hmm. against man or beast mm -hmm. that ye may know how that Yahweh put a difference between the Egyptians mm -hmm. and Israel. That proves so that's, that's for you chemists. That's for you chemists. They're not the same people. So what, what is a They're not the same Just people. Just like Chinese and Japanese. A bitch. What, what is a, a bitch. So get that shit. <laughs> that's what a female dog. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Look it up. <laughs> that's what it's called. Um, and I'm gonna go. That's what I'm going to next. So when you go to Matthew 15, because the brother was trying to explain how we had never read Matthew 15, um, which says a lot about himself. Um, Matthew 15 and 21. Then Yahweh went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered, uh -huh, and, she, and he answered her not a word. Messiah ain't look at her. She like, she ain't talking to me. He ain't even dyed his eyes. She ain't talking to me. Right, right. You know, so I don't know. I, it, yeah, right. he, he acknowledge it. I don't know where they got this friendly, happy-go-lucky. I love everybody, Messiah from. Because I'm reading. I'm gonna read it again. No, nah, well, I'm gonna read the, it again. Watch what the yeah, say, gonna, yeah, we're gonna see. Right, we're gonna right, see. Right, 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 and right. these men were in the spirit, man. Yeah, of course, Yahweh Shah was in the spirit. Con. They was following after his example. Con. Right. So I'm gonna read it again. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying. Have mercy on me. She asking for mercy. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, 
even say he Lord. Mm -hmm. Thou son of David knew his history. Mm -hmm. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, mm. for she crieth after us. They didn't say, Christ, why don't you just help her? Throw her a bone. They said, Christ, tell her to leave us alone. That's what they basically just said right there. But he answered and said, did he correct them? Did he tell them? You guys are wrong. Yeah. You should deal with the Canaanite woman. <laughs> Just because I didn't feel like dealing with her. You are my disciples. You deal with her. Did he tell them that? No, he didn't tell them that. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent. I am, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He made it clear. She ain't none of my business. I don't owe her nothing. That's what he's saying. I don't owe her a response. Why is she here? Then came she and worshipped him, mm -hmm. saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread. So who are the children? Who are the children? Who are the children? I am not, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those are the children. The children of God are the children of Israel. This is clear. I, it is not me to take the children's bread mm -hmm. and cast it dog. unto dogs. Wow. He called this woman a dog. Right? right on now I read the Egyptian with dogs. I read the Canaanites with dogs. All the rest of the nation, guess what? Israel referred to them as dogs. I'm going to show you something else in Philippians. Y'all can get mad all y'all want, but it's in the Bible you claim you love. Oh, sweet Jesus that you, not your Jesus, right? Your Jesus is called the woman a dog. He wouldn't even answer. Oh, I guess he races too. Look, look, he races too. He called her a dog because she's a Canaanite. God called the Egyptians a dog because they, cause they Hamites. I guess y'all, y'all, y'all Christians need to stop, man. It's either you gonna unfollow the whole Bible or just put it down and leave it alone and go full blown Satan, cause Satan waiting for that behind. Mm -hmm. Now, in Philippians chapter three and verse two, listen what Paul say. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to one so we can see who he's writing to. Finally, my brethren, these are Israelites, mm -hmm. rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you, to me indeed not grievous, but for, for you it is safe. It said, beware of dogs. <laughs> Was the disciples being aware of dogs? Was Hamashiach being aware of dogs? Yes, they was. Hey, Elder Ali. Khan, don't even do it. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Bring it down here. No, you're not. Just leave him alone. They don't want to come over here. I asked the both of them right in front of him. They don't want to come over here. Tell them, y'all bring that down here. What's up, I was gonna tell you to bring that down here. Now I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something. Yes, sir. And um, now we just confirmed that he called these other nations dogs. Mm -hmm. Now we're now, gonna now, read. I want you to now watch like it. it is. <laughs> I asked you already. What is a female dog? A bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he called a woman a bitch. That's what he called her. That's what he called her. That's what he called her. That's what a female dog is. <laughs> <laughs> we're not making that up. You can look, you can Google B I T C H on the Google, and the dictionary will tell you that's what it means. They know what a female is. That's what it means. Wow. He ain't called one man in the Bible a dog. It was the females. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. Hold on. Watch this. Hold on. Hold on. Watch this. Hold on. Let me get it. Let me get the script. Now, this is Revelation 22. And watch this. It's 22 and 14 and 15. It says, Bless are they that do his commandments. Mm -hmm. Did it say accepted Christianity? No, it didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Bless are they 
that keep, that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and they may enter through the gates into the city. This is the kingdom. That. Now watch this. Now watch this. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. For without, for the ones that's outside of the gate, the ones that ain't make the kingdom, are dogs. <laughs> Who? What are they? <laughs> I'm going to read it again. <laughs> for without are dogs. These are your other nations. But the, the, watch this. Another thing Sorcerers, too. whoremongers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So some of y'all figure out that the Christian church is a lie, but you have learned to love that lie. So you still continue to teach that lie, or you just silently embrace that lie. I'm here to tell you, the Most High is going to charge it to you. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the same book, Revelations 21, Verse 12, it says, and, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So the only people getting in these gates are who? Israelites. How much do you That's what Christians don't that's, that's the end. That's the end. They don't read that's, that part. No. They, they're coming in. They're, they're, they're going to get in. They're, they're coming in. in. The no, but they're going to come they're, in? Under, and I, cool. No, they're going to come under in. Who, under who, though? They're going to come in as under slaves. Yeah, they're yes. coming as slaves. But it's going to be. Oh, yeah. They're coming in. But that's another thing. It's going to be It's going to be righteous. It's going to be indentured servitude. Hold on. It's not going to be slavery. Watch this. Right. Hold on. That's after they pay. They're going to come in. Yes. That's after they pay out their servitude. Right. First, they got to right. pay right. for all the crap that they doing Beloved. to us. That right. They did to us. Beloved, can I now watch this. I got five minutes. I right. Go let me just, brother, yes, get the mic real quick. Beloved, let me just say this, and I gotta go. I had a Christian say to me that we should stop using the word hate. That it's a bad word, and Jesus never used it. And I said, well, I don't know what scripture you was using or reading, what verse of Bible that they had or she had. It was her and her husband. But let me just quote Daoud, alayhi salam, and let's see what he said. In, in the book of Psalms, chapter 39, listen to the words, these beautiful words. He says, Surely thou will slay the wicked, O God, O Allah. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Now these are the enemies of God that David is talking about. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Meaning that David said that he hate those who hate God, mm -hmm. that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee, meaning Satan's children. Listen to David. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies, he said. So it's only right to hate Satan and his children. Yeah, 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 but um, I, I got a question. Yes, sir. Now, 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 the king just brought out that David hated his enemies because a lot of you with the slave mentality always saying it's wrong to hate. Give me the scripture in Act where it says after that he lifted up David. Because we're going to see how the Most High felt about David even though he hated his enemies. Did he hate David? For loving his, I mean, for hating his enemies? No. The Acts, I think it's Acts, the 13th chapter. Um, after that, he lifted up David. We're going to see how the most I felt about him. If I'm correctly, he, he, wanted, he wanted King Saul to kill, right. kill all of the remnant of they Amalek. Yeah, yeah. They, right. They eat him up. He wanted to kill all of them. But, but King Saul wanted to let some of them live. Or was it one of them? It was one of them. Saul. Yeah, but he, left. he wanted to let one he live, right? He let the king live, and I think it was maybe a couple of them. 
also in his family. The Most High told him to kill a whole a whole entire people. Mm-hmm. But this Acts 13 and what? Um, to try the 22nd verse. Matter of fact, Acts. Uh, let me make sure first. Man. Okay. Oh no, you you right, you right, you right, Elder. Elder, you right. This is Acts 13, verse 22, and it says, "And when he had removed him." Now, let me let me break that down, because a lot of people out there don't have the understanding. Now, what it's talking about is when the Most High removed Saul from power, mm -hmm. because Saul had wickedness in his heart. He went against the Lord. The Most High removed him from power. When he had removed Saul, read. Wait. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Ooh. So even though David hated his enemies, like the brother just brought out mm -hmm. in the book of Psalms, the Most High said King David was a man after his own heart for hating his enemies. So what, you, what the hell you mean is wrong to hate? What you mean is wrong to hate? It says in Romans 9 and 13, Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have, I hate it. But I'm going to show you. you. You nations will make it. Bring out that um, Revelations 11 verse 2. The outer court is reserved for you. You're not going to be allowed in the inner court. But the outer court is only reserved for you after you go into captivity. Revelations 11 verse 2. But the court which is without the temple... Leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. So you're going to be there for three and a half years. Um, you're going to tread under our foot. And I, I don't know about the brother Marino, but I'm going to make you work a triple shift in my cotton field. Now you can think it's funny all you want to. Good. Chapter 6 and 11. Give you got Isaiah chapter 6 verse 11 and read to 14. We're going to show you what's going to happen to the other nations when Israel come into power. Hashem, Gone. This is Isaiah chapter 60. You said chapter 60? Chapter 60. Chapter verse 60. To, okay. To verse 14. Chapter 60. This is Isaiah chapter 60 to verse 11 to 14. Therefore thy gate shall be opened continually they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto their to unto thee the forces of the gentiles that their kings may may be brought verse 12 for the nations and kingdoms that will not serve thee shall per perish so the nation that do not serve us mm -hmm. what's going to happen to them it says they shall perish so they're going to have a choice mm -hmm. someone gets Ze Ze um, Ze zephaniah 3 verse 8 Keep, keep going and then, then get his mm -hmm. It says, For the nations of the kingdoms that will not serve thee shall be perished. Ye, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Mm. The glory of Laban shall, shall come unto thee, that fire tree, that pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come binding unto thee. Binding? Mm. And all, all the, the sons of the people who inflicted us. They shall become kneeling to us. come binding. Praying. Keep going. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves mm. down at, at thy soles of thy feet. At the soles of thy feet. Woo. Woo. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord. The, Zi the Zion, the Tazayawan of the Holy One, Israel. Zephaniah 3, verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation. Mm -hmm. yeah, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get some understanding here. So... Wait, we're gonna, indignation is like an annoyance. No, indignation is a righteous anger. Indis anger, indignation means righteous anger. So we're going to read this and we're going to get some understanding. Read it again, brother. Read it a little slower. To pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, 
for all the earth shall be devoured with fire of my jealousy. So, you know, um, pretty much, you know, you're supposed to wait on Hamashiach to destroy these nations. Um, you, you're supposed to wait upon Hamashiach. If you're trying to um, do this by yourself, Esau is going to put your ass to death. Because, you know, it tells you in the book of um, Genesis 27 verse 40 that Esau was blessed by the sword. This man was blessed to be a murderer. Don't you know that this man have um, chemical weapons that are just attack you genetically and it won't even attack, you know, do anything to one of their people? They actually have chemical um, weapons like that. They have biochemical agents that affect you and not affect them. Someone get um, 2 Peter 3 verse 10. Because you guys was actually given the chance to rule for a thousand years. But after that, you're going to go into captivity for a thousand years. And this is what the Christian churches do not teach. These kind of scriptures, they do not teach in their churches. What you got there? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. For he that will love life... No, that's not what I want. First Peter's three and ten. Salakia. I mean, First Peter's first three and ten. No, uh, what you want? You in first? Yeah. Yeah, you in first. It's Second Peter's three and ten. Oh, that's. You in, you in first, fire? My bad. Second Peter's three, verse ten. And for people who right. ask that, what we do this for? The scriptures tell you to debate your cause. So you're supposed to you're supposed to get understanding. You ready? Uh, yeah, yeah. From go the ahead. Bible. But you know, not our own perspective, not our own minds. You're supposed to go in these scriptures and go in depth. Yep, that's right. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So the day of the Lord, meaning the second turn of Hamashiach, Yahawashah, will come as a thief in the night. When you least expect it. You're going to be to the damn club. You're going to be in your Jehovah Wickedness congregation. You're going to be out there calling yourself a damn Christian. When a Christian essentially supposed to mean a follower of Christ. Because that's what they start calling him. You're supposed to be following Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. And he tells you that he did not came to change the law, but to fulfill. To carry out what the prophet was actually doing before him. Read on. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Boom! There goes your capital. There goes your United Nation building. There goes the whole damn state. Slavery is where you're going. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I so, know it's letting you know that it's talking about nuclear destruction. Them ICBMs. This, intercontinental ballistic missiles. No, this is talking about the Lord bringing these, these things that they call UFOs in the sky. They're going to find out that they're angels. You're going to find out that those chariots of the Most High, those are angels. Most High is a beast. Mm -hmm. The earth and also, wait, the earth also and the works that are here therein shall be burned up. Right. So, I mean, you're going to be to utterly destroyed. Totally destroyed. So, you was given a little time to rule. What you got, Keith? Oh, nothing. Uh, well, I, was I, was, uh, I was just reading uh, Romans. Not you yet. know, to what, what if Roman is talking about what if some did not believe, you know? What if they didn't believe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, bring that out. Bring that out. Because there's a lot of Israelites who don't believe that's going to happen. Like, for instance, the, the Seventh-day Adventists didn't believe it. That these other nations are going into captivity. I know, bro. But what, what kind of captivity? They're going like, to slave. Like chains and everything. Chains all This is Romans 3, verse 3. And this, you know, this is for um, unbelievers in Israel. Yes, sir. And it says, for what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So that's saying, if they didn't believe, so what, is the Most High going to stop his mission? Or stop what he have to get accomplished? It says, God forbid, ye, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written. Meaning, when you see as it is written, you can go find it somewhere else in this book. And most of the time, you can go back to the Old Testament because that's what they were using to quote out of. You will, you will learn that Yahweh Shai, he was quoting out of the Old Testament. The, the, the prophets were quoting out of the Old Testament. You need these two books together because these two books correlate together. And it says, God forbid ye. Yea, let God be true, but every man be a liar, as it is written. 
that thou might be that thou mightest be justified in thy sins and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our if our unrighteousness command that the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous? Who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? <laughs> and he's talking about the Israelite world. Plus the Plus the rest of the nations, because everybody's going to get judged. Right, right, right. I got a script. Let's get something clear for Marino here, man. Now, I'm going to show you that Esau was actually essentially given approximately two, you know, um, 2,000 years to rule. Then after 2,000 years, the Most High is going to raise us up back to power. But the Most High is not dealing with Esau's calendar. He's dealing with his own calendar. Someone get um, Hosea 6 verse 2. Hosea 6 and 2. I mean, you know what I mean? Even with a camera, you know what I mean? That paper. But, uh, Hosea 6 and 2. Like, can you grab that on your that paper? Yeah. Hosea 6 verse 2. See, after two days, the Most High is going to raise the nation of Israel back up to power. And we're going to rule again. And it's getting pretty close to that. Just about everything has already happened except for this proof, this truth spreading to the four corners of the earth. Yeah. Just about everything else has actually already happened. Hosea 62, you said? Right. That's why we have to fight. We don't have a discussion. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 2. And it says, After two days will he revive us. Let me hold that. So the Most High is not dealing with man's calendar. Now, this is why a lot of people think that the earth was actually created in, in seven days. That's not what that scripture means. One day unto the Most High is like a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Matter of fact, probably should get that scripture. But finish, finish bringing that out for you. Yes, sir. We should get that scripture, too. And it says, in the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. So that means on the third day, that means on the third day that Israel is going to come back to, to power. That means after the, the three, th at the end of the 2,000 years, the third day is talking about another 1,000 years. That's the 1,000 years that these nations are going to be in the captivity. That's what that's talking about. But what you got, uh, Marino? This is um, Ezekiel 25, chapter... Yeah, 25 verse 12 all the way down to 14. This is a prophecy against Edom. Well, well, hold on. Let me let me get that scripture to prove that. Yeah. Um, that the one day is a thousand yeah. years. Yeah, um, it's 2 Peter 3 verse 8. Bring it out, kid. Yeah, so, yeah, get it. Hold it for me. I got you. Bring it Second Peter. So, you know, just to show you that the Most High is not dealing with man's calendar, one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Second Peter 3 verse 8. Second Peter's chapter three. Second Peter's three verse eight. A day unto the Lord is as a thousand years. Yes, sir. This is Second Peter chapter three verses eight. Verse eight. And it says, But beloved, be not ignorant, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Let me say that again. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as as, as one day. So what, that's telling you. This is well, this is go, talking about Edom. Ezekiel 25 verse 12 down to 14. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. Mm -hmm. Now here's another one. Now this one is coming. This day is coming. Verse 14, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Yahweh. I'll read it again. 
I'm gonna wait for him. But that's the brother that. That's not the. I want them to hear me clearly. Oh, you good? You want to wait? Oh, okay. We're going. This man, I look. This right him. here is what I look forward to, yo. <laughs> you see that? I underline. You remember X Men? Mm -hmm. It's coming. Yeah, I got something in here about that. Like towards the back, the list is a lot of case for us. Pretty much what I done in oh. this. Oh, look it out. Like yeah. Verse 14 is proof that it's gonna be like it's gonna be like Dragon Ball Z up in this place real soon. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. So the Most High is gonna work through us and make us do amazing, fierce things. Mm -hmm. And they shall do and eat them according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Yahweh. So that's telling you who's taking vengeance. Mm -hmm. The Most High. See, see, just like, just like you know, the Old Testament people, they say that there's no saviors. But when you look at it, there there were saviors. Moses was considered a, a type of savior. And King David. King David too. Why? Because the Most High worked through them. He works through people. So how can you say that the, the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, Yeshai, is not the Savior? You know? How can you say that he doesn't have any other people that he goes through and deal with? But you, you, but you clearly believe in Moses. You clearly believe in the Mosaic Law. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 Y'all clearly love King David. But, but most how I work through King David. So come on, you guys. We got to get it together, man. We got to get it together. These doctrines are going to tear us apart. That's why you got to get in these scriptures and learn. And here's what you'll get, too. The most how would do this for you. It said, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2, down to 5. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Mm -hmm. I will break in pieces the gates of brass uh -huh. and cut in sunder the bars of iron and I will give thee the Hold treasures who, who's in the bars of iron who the people in the bars of iron tell me I know you know tell me Israelites, Israelites. that's right and I will give thee the treasures of darkness Oh, but the Most High ain't evil. He ain't, Most High is good. He's all good, is he? Or did he make evil? Mm -hmm. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob's my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have...